What's going on, fantasy owners? Welcome back to another episode of the Eye Test, where we simplify your process as a fantasy football manager. Today, we are carrying on with our boom bust segment, but today we're going to be going over the second round projected rookies of your dynasty rookie draft. Before we get started, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and like this video. We very much appreciate it. Guys, we're going to be talking about five controversial, borderline boomer bust players in the second round of our rookie mock drafts, or sorry, of our rookie drafts as we get closer to the day, the very special day. Those players include Hendon Hooker, Josh Downs. We're going to talk about a tight end for once, Michael Mayer, Kendra really? Miller, and Kayshawn Booty. So if you are in the position to draft any of these five players and you're not really sure if you want to draft them, tune in because we are in for a good show. Paul, let's start out with you. What are your views on Hendon Hooker, who's projected to be the fourth quarterback, the fifth quarterback taken off the board in this year's rookie draft? So I, I want to like Hendon Hooker. I really do. He played very, very well up until his injury. He was very impressive as Bob was talking in our pre-meeting. He was the Heisman favorite up until he got hurt. But I'm going to lead on the side of bust here, even though this was a very, very hard decision for me to make. He is entering the draft at 25 years old. He's coming off of that ACL surgery, which his age and the injury just make it that much harder on an already super difficult thing to be a rookie quarterback in the NFL. I do think that he's going to fall in the draft, which means that probably a decent team hopefully will grab him and can coach him up and to do all that. But the other big thing here is Tennessee did not run a traditional professional offense. And I don't know how much weight that carries in your decision on where you draft guys on where you like them. But that is something that's extremely difficult. And then you throw on the age and the ACL injury, it's just more reason to be cautious for me. And so I like a lot of other guys in that second round over him, so I'm going to lean bust. Bob, I know you have some special feelings about Hendon Hooker. Let's let's hear about those. Yes, yeah, so not to spoil, as Paul pretty much already alluded to, I am in on Hendon Hooker. Not saying that he's the next Pat Mahomes or anything like that, but if you're comparing him to the other quarterbacks in this class, I have him as QB3. Now, there are, you know, warranted concerns, his age, coming off injury, style of offense that Tennessee ran and all that stuff, but when I watch him play, he passes the eye test for me. He can make the throws, he's has a lot of awareness in the pocket. He doesn't get scared in the pocket like guys like Will Levis do. So my eyes just tell me that he can be good in the NFL. I think he would be best served in a situation like maybe Minnesota, who may be looking to move off Kirk Cousins after this year, sit behind Kirk for a year, and then take over for him after. He just looks the part for me. He looks like the third best quarterback on tape in this class. Yeah, I agree with you, Bob. I'm I'm super high on Hendon Hooker. And for a guy holding the 1.12 draft pick, there's a chance that I take him at the end of the first round in my dynasty rookie draft. I have some stats that stand out to me, what I just absolutely love. He had two senior years in college. His first senior year, he had 31 touchdowns to three interceptions. His second senior season which included his injury, 11 games played, 27 touchdowns, and two interceptions. So I think the decision-making is on the high end for Hendon Hooker. I mean, it seems like he's reading the field very well. He seems very mature, and that might speak to the amount of years that he played in college. I mean, his freshman year was 2018. So, and then he, he ended up transferring to Tennessee, and it seemed like that just really excelled his play. So I think you're right, and I think that might be the theme of these second round players that we're going to be going over today is that the draft, the team that drafts them in the NFL draft really comes into play when considering if these players are going to be putting up productive numbers, their rookie season. So for the second round players, make sure you're watching the actual NFL draft and making a say 2.0 version of your decisions on if these guys are boom or bust. But I'm going to go ahead and agree with you here, Bobby. I think Hendon Hooker is yeah. certainly a boom player. Let's move on thing. to 
Yeah, go ahead, Bob. Oh, go ahead. Just one You're more fine. thing, because I'm very passionate about this. Your decision for not taking a guy or for maybe thinking he's not going to be good shouldn't be an age thing. Quarterbacks are protecting the NFL now. So if he gets into the NFL at age 26, he still has at least 10 years now. So it's not like he's 26 and he's a running back where, you know, he'll probably be out of the league in three years. Quarterbacks are protected. I just don't think it's a reason not to pick a guy if he if you think he's the best player. That's a good point. I really hope right. you guys are right, but I don't think you are. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on over to the wide receiver room here. This guy, lots of mixed feelings on Josh Downs here. Coming out of UNC, it's a smaller school. That's turning a lot of people off. But his skill set is certainly turning a lot of people on. And one of those people that is certainly turned on right now is Paul Orlando. Paul, what do you have to say about Josh Downs? So I, I do really like Josh Downs. I am going to label him as a boom, even though there are a few things that scare me. And the number one, well, let's talk about the things that he does well. He does a lot of things really well. He, I alluded to this in the first video, but Josh Downs is, I think, four or five inches shorter than Quentin Johnston, yet comes down with 72% of his contested catches, which is just absolutely insane for a guy that size. He's got that dog in him. He goes after the football. He makes plays. I absolutely love that. And that's why I'm leaning towards Boom. The only thing that does scare me is I don't think he will be anything more than a slot receiver in the NFL. He will not play on the outside. He just, he, he can't. We watched with Hollywood Brown. They tried to make him an outside wide receiver, and we saw that he works better in the slot and running that wheel route up to get open on deep plays. And Hollywood Brown has had a very serviceable fantasy career. So with that being said, I'm going to compare him to Hollywood Brown here, and I kind of foresee his NFL production being similar, which would make him a boom in my opinion. All right, Bob, what do you think about Josh Downs? I am also in on Josh Downs, and I will label him a boom. I think a lot of people tend to mix up being a really good NFL receiver and being a fantasy-relevant wide receiver. And Josh Downs screams to me fantasy relevancy. He may not be even a top-two wide receiver on the field at times, but if he's playing primarily out of the slot, he's going to catch passes. He's going to get open, so... He just looks like a relevant fantasy asset to me. The prototypical slot receiver, and you've seen plenty of slot receivers excel over the years in fantasy. Keenan Allen is a primary example of that. He's basically never played on the outside. So think of something like that when you're looking at Josh Downs. If he gets you know, the draft capital and he gets a starting role, maybe not immediately, but eventually then there's no reason that he can't put up decent fantasy numbers. I just wouldn't expect him, you know, to ever be like a wide receiver one or maybe like a high-end wide receiver two. You know, maybe he could squeak his way into top 20 at some point. All right, so it seems like it's an overwhelming boom for Josh Downs. I'll go ahead and agree with you guys. Again, I for the second-round players, I'm really focused on who they get drafted by because I want to see where Josh Downs fits in with that offense. But I do think that his production certainly shows, his college production certainly shows that he has the ability to succeed in the NFL and in your fantasy leagues. Let's move on over to the tight end position, which we don't talk about much during the fantasy season because we're usually just always so upset about our tight ends, except for like two people in your fantasy league because they have the top two tight ends that always produce. But this rookie draft is dare I say loaded with tight ends. It just seems like there's a lot loaded. more high expectations on tight ends. And we're going to talk about Michael Mayer because there's a lot of chatter that he may not be the tight end one in your rookie. I keep saying mock draft today. I don't know why. Maybe just because I've done so many uh, rookie drafts. Bob, what do you think about Michael Mayer, the projected tight end one? So I am going to label Mare as a boom. Now, there is a little asterisk with that. As we all know, it usually takes tight ends a year, if not a couple years, to get fully acclimated to the NFL and start producing. Look at Travis Kelsey as a prime example. I don't know what year it was that he really took off, but he was not who he is when he came into the NFL. 
So just something to keep in mind when I say that I think Mare's going to be a boom. But the thing that really stuck stood out to me when I watched his tape was that he is amazing at contested catch, catches and in traffic. So if there's like three guys around him, he could still make the catch. He's not scared off by the contact that's inevitably going to come from that. And obviously that's huge as a tight end, especially when you're in the red zone where tight ends usually make most of their money. So I'm labeling him a boom. That's a very good point. Michael Mayer is just an absolute unit, and he's fast and he's strong, which, of course, we're looking for in tight ends. Paul, what do you think? No, I think you guys both kind of hit the nail on the head here. I think Michael Mayer, as soon as he gets drafted, no matter where he gets drafted, he's going to be a top six tight end this year. There's absolutely no doubt in my mind. I absolutely love him coming out of Notre Dame. Like you guys said, the contested catches, the catches in traffic are huge. He's going to make a wonderful, wonderful security blanket for somebody. Now, I'm not saying in redraft leagues to pick this guy in the third or fourth round. Don't do that. But from the tight end position, you are getting someone who has top six tight end upside immediately as a rookie, no matter where he goes. I think that he's going to be awesome. And he can block a little bit, too. So he's going to be on the field a lot which is what we want for tight ends. We want them to be on the field. We want them running routes on pass plays. So I think it'll be, I think you'll be very happy with Michael Mayer if you get him at the appropriate spot. All right, I'll open the floor for discussion here. I want to know, like, is Michael Mayer your guys' tight end one going into the rookie draft? Without a doubt. I think I'm Dalton Kincaid. I haven't watched enough of the other tight ends to really speak on it, but I really like what I saw from Michael Mayer, so he would probably just be my tight end one by default. And Michael Mayer is projected to get drafted by the Packers, I believe at like in the middle of the draft, like 13 or something like that. And young quarterback's best friend is a tight end. So that Jordan Love connection with Michael Mayer could certainly be very, very sexy landing spot will be huge for him that's for sure if he if you want him to produce this year landing spot's going to be massive yeah for sure all right let's move on to kendra miller guys we'll start with paul here paul what are your thoughts on kendra miller is he a boom or a bust miller dude i i want to love kendra miller so badly oh we want to love all these guys that's just not i want to but i actually took some time and probably watched 20 minutes of his tape today and he just does not pass the eye test for me. I'm going to go bust Ooh. here. He just is not an athletic runner. He does run hard, but he's just like kind of wonky to watch run the ball. He does have some good patience, which is nice. You want to see that because that does show you that he's a mature, a mature running back. But he lacks a lot of the physical and athletic abilities that I look for in running backs, especially when I want them on my fantasy team. So I'm going to go bust here from fantasy perspective, but I really hope that Kendra Miller carves out a pretty solid NFL career. Bob, what do you think? I thought Kendra Miller was your new Rashad White, Paul. I I thought that too, and then I watched more stuff, and I just couldn't do it to myself. Okay, I'm pretty much on board with you with this. I watched a lot of his tape this morning preparing for this episode. I really wanted to like him because we keep hearing about how deep this running back class is. And to me, he kind of looked like a Walmart version of Aaron Jones. And Aaron Jones is good, but not if you're a Walmart version of Aaron Jones. <laughs> Again, runs really hard, but just doesn't pass the eye test for me. There was nothing that I saw in his tape where I was like, wow, I really need to draft this guy. This guy's 100% going to come into the NFL and demand a role for himself. There just really wasn't enough for me to say that he's going to boom. Could he in the proper situation? Yes, just like any player can, but I wouldn't bet on it. Yeah, I think that this is a very good example of when when players start to get hyped up because of their stats versus what our eyes are seeing and the eye test, which is what we're all about. We don't want you to be only focused on stats. Sure, stats are important, but does he pass the eye test? And what we're seeing is that he may not be quick enough to be that outstanding top five running back in the future. 
because he's dancing around defenders and scoring touchdowns. You know, like he only had one breakout year. That's it. And it was his last year in college where he went from running 623 yards to 1,400 yards. So I think people are just seeing that huge boost in production and you, using that only to uh, to boost him up in drafts. So I'm with you guys there. I'm going to label him as a bust. Let's move on to our next player here and our final player of the second round that we're going to be talking about, and that is Kayshawn Booty, which we just learned that's how you pronounce it. So all I'm not time name. A joke. Yeah, that's Kayshawn an all Booty. time name. Is that just an automatic boom? Do we even have to talk Dude, about yeah. it? Dude, <laughs> yeah. Don't even talk about boom. <laughs> Let's hear what Bob has to say on if he thinks Kayshawn Booty is a boom or a bust. So an- another guy that I really wanted to like, you know, you hear there was a lot of hype about him early in the offseason. He was being ranked probably in the top three to five of the wide receivers at this point. But then he fell off after the combine. And there's questions about his character and stuff like that and i'm I'm not really going to talk about it that much but it's worth mentioning at least watching his tape he is kind of a one-trick pony he's just a guy that's really good in space if he's not in space he's not that effective his college career was pretty much a roller coaster when it was a huge ascension Mm -hmm. and then as it got later in his college career a huge fall off you know Obviously, there's probably cases of people that have had that, you know, path and performed in the NFL, but it's not a good look when you're regressing going into the NFL. So, again, maybe like a Quentin Johnston situation where if he lands in the right situation, but I just don't see it. I don't see enough from him. I think he's just a one-trick pony. Yeah, I certainly see him as, like, getting drafted in the third round of the NFL draft or possibly even later because of that regression statement that you made, Bob. Not a big fan of 11 games played your senior year and you're only scoring two touchdowns. I don't even – I don't see how anyone can think that that translates into the NFL in a positive way. Um, So, Paul, take it away here. Close us off. What do you think about Kayshawn Booty? Yeah, I'm I'm busting on booty right here. I oh, just... that's so bad. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna clip that. We'll clip that. I'm gonna just post that to post that to like yeah. the TikTok. Just that. yeah, that I'm about to make that like an audio clip. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I I'm I'm busting on booty here. I think I don't think his game transitions well to the NFL and then for all the things that you guys both mentioned but the other big thing that stood out to me is this guy gets bullied at the line of scrimmage and that's just not something you can do in the NFL these corners are head and shoulders better than the best corner he probably faced well maybe not the best corner he faced because he's from the SEC but you guys understand what I'm saying third string cornerbacks in the NFL are better than most first string cornerbacks he saw at the college level. And if he's getting bullied on the line there and he doesn't run the Christmas of routes for me and he drops too many passes for me, there's just not a lot to like here about booty. And with that being said, he'll probably be the next DK Metcalf because it's me, but <laughs> I just, I just, I can't buy into him. He's almost avoidable at all costs for me in the second, third round of, of rookie drafts. I think if you could get him like really late, you know, maybe like tail end of the third, maybe mid third, if you just want to take a chance on a guy that showed a lot of potential at some point, maybe then, but definitely not where he'll probably be drafted. Certainly. And I would say like, if you do have a lot of wide receivers on your dynasty team and you just want to continue to youth in that squad and you, maybe you have a taxi squad in your dynasty league, booty's not a bad pick to throw in the taxi squad. There's really no risk there. He can he can sit there for as long as he wants until he starts to produce in the NFL. That does it for our episode, guys. Thanks again for watching. Go ahead and press that subscribe button, like this video, and comment who you think is going to be the biggest boom and who's going to be the biggest bust in your rookie draft. Coming up, we're getting close to the NFL draft, April 27th. We're going to be doing a live stream on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube, so make sure you tune in. And we will see you guys later. So Peace. we're all bust. We're all unanimously busting on booty. Is yeah, that we're on booty? 
That's the Man, that's the name of the episode for sure. That's just team bonding at its finest right there. Just 